Hi, it's Maggie. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, it's Maggie, the Irish Gypsy, here to bring you your June 2018 general readings. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and welcome to any newcomers. Thank you, as always, for all of your likes, shares, subscribes, and for taking the time to send in your support, feedback, and comment. It is always welcome and always appreciated. Thank you, and always a big thank you to all of my clients out there, both regular and new, for keeping me so wonderfully and joyfully busy with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. Always an honor and a pleasure. And as most of you know, if you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can get more information on my contact details by looking at the description bar of all the videos I post or by going to my YouTube channel's homepage and clicking on that little about button. Please feel free to email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire. I'd be delighted to work with you. Uh, turnaround time for personal readings is pretty fast because I do readings full time, five to six days a week. Um, uh, I can almost always schedule a reading for you live or recorded within uh, a couple of weeks, sometimes a little sooner. It just depends on how the scheduling goes. I do love and romance, uh, career work and finance, uh, compatibility spreads, reconciliation spreads, six and 12 month overviews to take a look at what's coming in your life for the next six or 12 months, depending on how far out you want to look and uh, channeled messages from loved ones uh, passed on and uh, also gift readings if you want to give someone the gift of a personal reading. So email me if you're interested. We'll go from there. You can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go under Irish Gypsy and that link is also with my contact details for quick answers to the quick easy questions. So <clears throat> This reading is for the fire sign of Leo, Leo the Lion for June 2018. Remember to watch your rising and your moon sign videos as well if you know them. If you can, they can provide additional clarification, sometimes play out a little more predictably. Uh, general readings can be a little tricky sometimes because you're reading for a lot of people. The details and, and timing may vary uh, depending on what's going on in the lives of everybody watching, but the energy and advice always remains the same. All right, our lovely Leos, our feisty felines. Let's see what June has in store for you. Okay, Leo, we begin with the Eight of Swords and the Seven of Swords. Next to that, we have the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands. We have the Queen of Swords and the Eight of Cups and the Hierophant and the Three of Cups. Ooh, beautiful ending to the month. From the bottom of the deck representing your crowning card, which is your overall energy, focus, and guidance and advice for the month, we have the Ace of Wands. So Leo, my goodness, Leo, my lovely fire sign Leos, it looks like I mean, your overall energy, your overall focus, what's in the air for June and what you need to remember in June is exciting new beginnings. It looks like you're moving. It feels like a lot of the signs are kind of have been through some some turbulence uh, lately. Uh, and, you know, of course, the details and level of that is going to vary in general readings, but been through quite a bit lately and you're in the process of closing out old stuff and going through transformation and change. Uh, I feel like a lot of you, maybe it's because it's a summer month and people tend to do more of it then, uh, are, that change is actually physical for some of you too, moving and relocating, maybe traveling, maybe a combination of both. Uh, definitely exciting new beginnings is the overall focus and what you need to remember is what I'm hearing to focus on new beginnings. Uh, I feel like this month is kind of closing out the new, prepping, or sorry, closing out the old, prepping for the new. There may be a lot of details to take care of. A little bit of challenges here and there. The Ace of Wands, exciting new beginnings. Aces represent the number one, so they always represent the start of something new, new opportunities, a new beginning, the beginning of a new path that has a lot of opportunity if it's if it's nurtured and taken care of. Because aces are like seeds. They contain a lot of potential, but in order for that potential to manifest, they have to be planted at the right time and, and carefully tended and taken care of so that they can manifest and grow to their full potential. Wands is fire energy. In the tarot, this is the energy of, of creation change, movement, action, power, it's fire, it's enthusiasm, passion, uh, artistic, creative endeavors, career, relationships, everything. It's exciting and it's usually very fluid energy, forward moving, and it's about 
working and building on things for your future. So exciting new beginnings is the theme and what you need to remember, especially when you're feeling maybe trapped or bound by something or bogged down with things that you have to deal with and every and all the details that need to be taken care of. For those of you that are, I got this for cancer too, I'm getting a strong like moving vibe here as well. Uh, moving, relocating, uh, you know, summer is a, is, a, is a big time for people to move and relocate and travel too because, you know, generally kids are out of school so it's a good time to make changes. So if there's a lot on your plate for the month of, of, of June, Leo, don't, don't, you know, don't look at the list all at once. Kind of break it down into manageable chunks and kind of just knock stuff off every day because that's how it gets accomplished. The time is going to pass anyway and, and what we make of it is up to us. So remember that what you're doing, it's all about these exciting new beginnings. Um, it looks like the first half of the month, um, you may feel caught up in something or bound or held hostage by something and maybe stuck a bit uh, in how to move through something. And, and and what to do to move forward and looking at long-term goals down the road, regardless of whether this is in the nature of a relationship or, you know, the work career area of your life. Uh, uh, because the first half of the month, I mean, the first week we had the Eight of Swords and the Seven of Swords can be a challenging combination. The second week we have the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands, crossroads, decisions, maybe feeling a bit stuck. So the first half of the month, you know, it's some challenging energy. But here's the thing. You have three, in the first two weeks, you have three swords and one wands. Remember, wands is that fire energy. It's creative energy. But in the, in the first part of June, maybe the end of May, the first part of June, there's all this air energy, these sword cards. Air energy is mental, cerebral, intellectual. It's our thoughts and our ideas and our belief systems because that's how our belief systems and, and thoughts and how we look at things affects the way that we see the world, people, how we relate and communicate. So there's all this mental energy in the first half of the month feeling kind of trapped and held hostage and bound and maybe stuck. I mean, these two cards are sitting side by side, you know, um, the Eight of Swords, but it's somewhat illusionary, which is the positive aspect of cards like this, meaning that while this looks like she's totally bound, a victim, held hostage, unable to break free or free herself, she's really not. Swords represent ideas, belief system, thoughts. So the only thing that's keeping you trapped and held hostage, Leo, it's, it's in your head. Um, which means that the source of whatever you're afraid of or feeling bound by might be valid, but the Eight of Swords represents that you have more power than you think you do. You have the power to free yourself from this situation. Uh, the swords are wide enough for her to walk through. Nobody's forced or is holding her down on her knees. The chains which bind her wrists aren't attached to anything or anybody with a twist of her wrist. She could just completely free herself from that, rip off the blindfold, stand up on her own two feet, look around and go, I am not going to be a victim here anymore. I'm going to take back control of my life. I have the power anyway and remove herself from this situation. So you're not really bound in hell hostage. So for those of you who are feeling that way around the end of May, the beginning part of June, you're not. Don't fall into the, it's just, it's, it's ideas, it's words, it's belief systems. You're not, you can remove yourself and free yourself. What clarifies the Eight of Swords, that sense of feeling bound or held hostage, is the Seven of Swords, which is a card that often shows up for deception of some kind. It can represent actual theft, which is based on deception anyway, you know, like money, property, whatever, being exploited, taken advantage of, uh, lies, deception, someone or something appearing to be one thing when the reality is, is not that, it's something different. So some of you, it could be that somebody else you know, caused some, there's been some kind of deception or hidden secretive things, you know, that have come to, I feel like it's kind of come to light in a sense recently, and that may be the cause of this feeling trapped and held hostage. It could be something that somebody else did to you per se, or it could be something else, it could be something that you did to somebody else, meaning that you may have withheld information or truth or knowledge, or may have been a deception, even though you may not have meant to do it to hurt somebody else, but maybe it came out and there was a lot of pain and chaos around it. I feel like actually, for those of you for whom this resonates, not everybody, but whenever there's a situation that involves more than one people, it's never just, the blame is never just on one doorstep. So I feel like for a lot of you for whom this kind of situation resonates, I feel like it's with another person, maybe two other people. I feel like everybody kind of had their own part to play in this, but you may be feeling like I can't get free of this, even if the actual event is over. I feel some of you, it's still playing out. It's like you feel trapped by it. 
Um, and for those of you that feel, you know, oh, I did this and I shouldn't have, you know, there's a point at which you have to remove yourself from that. Meaning, okay, if I did something wrong here, I own it. I apologize for it. I make the amends that I can. I look at why I did it and, and what was causing that so that I cannot repeat the same mistake in the future. And I feel like for some of you, it's had something to do with money and a relationship. Um, I'm not sure how, but that's what I feel. Um, and, and look at what fostered it. What's my, re what's my responsibility here so that I cannot make the same mistakes and move on and not like keep castrating yourself and, and, and you know, flagellating, whipping yourself about it and, and vice versa. So when, this, when and if this energy comes up, remember that you are not held hostage from that. We want to free ourselves from this. We want to reverse this and it can be. Uh, next to that, we have the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands. Twos represent crossroads, duality, choices. Uh, the Two of Swords can represent, again, feeling stuck. It's just a continuation, although to a lesser degree, of the Eight of Swords, because we've gone from the, and I, I, at least I like the progression, we've gone from the Eight of Swords showing up around the first week to the Two of Swords, swords, swords showing up around the second week. Um... So it's a lesser degree of the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is totally feeling trapped. The Two of Swords is kind of feeling stuck. Maybe there's something in front of you that you need to look at, that you're, uh, there's a, some reluctance and resistance to looking at it, which is what the blindfold represents. She's blindfolded in both of these. In order to move past, to achieve resolution and move past something, the blindfold has to be taken off. And I feel like for some of you Leos, and, um, you know, I hope this doesn't come off as too much of a lecture. Uh, uh, and believe me, I know what I'm talking about. My, my primary rising sign is Leo. Uh, my primary sun, my sun sign is Leo. Um, Leo is a wonderful sign and a wonderful fire sign, but sometimes we can get, it's a fixed sign too, and sometimes we can get fixed on something. And I feel like for some of you, there's this relationship situation and conflict within a relationship, including one, maybe two people. There may have been issues around money or something like that, but I feel like the blindfold represents that there may be difficulty in owning your part of it, particularly if you feel like somebody else did the majority of you know, whatever caused the chaos and disruption and deception and all of that kind of stuff. I still feel like you know, there is something to be owned here and something to be looked at, um, Leo. Uh, and, and it also could be about setting boundaries with other people too and how you um, may have difficulty in setting boundaries that are either too restrictive or too open. So it's about uh, setting boundaries both with yourself and other people. And I feel like there may be a bit of a reluctance and a resistance with that lovely stubborn fire sign energy and not wanting to look at maybe completely, totally, you know, what what part that, that you may have had to play in this. So make sure to, to have the humility and courage and wisdom. Humility meaning knowing who we are and who we're not, honestly. Um, to kind of take the blindfold off and look at everything. Um, and look at what, what was around the situation, what causes so that moving forward, we don't have to make the same mistakes again because the Two of Swords can represent feeling stuck and feeling a little blinded by that and it affecting your ability to make, uh, to move forward on your on a path towards long-term goals and choices because that's what his, this man's trying to do. He's trying to figure out which path to take and it's not about what he wants in the present. It's about what he really hopes to accomplish in the future down the road. Um, choosing long-term goals makes it easier to see the path that we can choose to, that, uh, to take action and make the decisions that lead um, towards fulfilling those long-term goals. So the inability or refusal or reluctance to look at everything head-on and honestly um, can interfere with our ability to see long-term goals realistically and to be able to move towards them. Um, it starts first with with, within ourselves and that's for everybody every sign everywhere so there's this process kind of going on the end of May and the first half of June don't get stuck in it um, it, it can be really difficult sometimes to rip that blindfold off and look at a situation entirely especially when other people betrayed us and we have to look at you know what part did I have to play in this it can be difficult to do but it's absolutely essential here so you don't get stuck in this energy and we can move on into the future because remember overall energy and guidance is exciting new beginnings that's what this month is wrapping up the old, prepping for the new. We need to look at it with truth, illumination, clarity, wisdom, honesty, and, and try to actually set some of the emotions on the outside because emotions are wonderful, terrible. They fluctuate up and down. They're not the most reliable things and it's never a good decision to, they can lead us to do things that we regret or keep us stuck in things. Um, next we have the Queen of Swords and the Eight of Cups. 
the Queen of Swords, air energy, truth, insight, wisdom, clarity. That's also what swords represent. That's what the Queen and King of Swords would be. They represent people who, Queens and Kings represent individuals who have mastered their suit. They've reached the top of their game, so to speak. The Queen of Swords and the King of Swords, this is, remember, thoughts, belief systems, ideas. There's a lot of road behind this woman. Uh, she's learned a lot. She doesn't suffer fools well. She looks at a situation, okay, what's the truth here? Wisdom, insight, truth, illumination, clarification, not really bogged down by emotional ups and downs. This is about looking at things head on, truthfully, realistically, manifesting that, that energy. That's what leads to healing. That's what begins that healing process is looking at things honestly because that's what we need to happen, needs to happen, Leo, in order to bring this situation uh, to a close and so we can move on into the future and let go of the pain, the sorrow, the guilt, the resentment, all of that. Um, looking at things head on at, at everything, every part that everybody had to play in this, particularly ourselves. That's what the Queen of Swords would do. Um, and, and, you know, that, that can come at a cost, but it's what needs to happen. Swords cut through things. They cut through and, and illuminate things. And that's what needs to happen here so that we can free ourselves from this situation once and for all. And from the belief systems, thoughts, ideas, and behaviors that led to it because that's what we need in order to walk away from it. That's what the Queen of Swords does in order to leave the situation behind. Uh, these these cups tipped over, spilled out. Some of them imply that this man has tasted and drunk for most, if not all of these, but he's turned his back on him because they represent disillusionment, disappointment, something which turned out to be different than what he thought or didn't work out. He's made up his mind to definitively leave them behind. He may not be entirely sure in what direction he's going in because he's still surveying the horizon, but he's he's turning his back. It's time to leave this behind. This disappointment, this disillusionment, once and for all is what I'm getting. I'm getting that whatever this situation has been, Leo, well, it may be a different situation with different people. It's maybe a manifestation of a behavior pattern or what I call a karmic loop that you may have gotten stuck in because of a way of looking at something, a way of behaving, a way of making decisions and choices, which is no longer working and must be, you must take a look at that, take the blindfold off and cut yourself free from that because that's how you're going to move on into these exciting new beginnings. And I feel like you do, Leo, you wonderful Leos, you grab that fire energy and you're true to your Leo self and you manifest and you move on with that honest, generous spirit. At or towards the end of the month, we have this wonderful combination of cards, Hierophant and the Three of Cups. And I'm getting to, just like I did for Cancerians, that for if, for those of you for whom this resonates as a relationship reading, like something to do with like the love and romance portion of your life, I feel like this has caused a lot of turbulence in that relationship and maybe with another person or other people as well. And there may have been some separation and distance, physical or otherwise, or a combination of both. But I feel like at the end of the month, beginning of July, there's a coming back together again, a reconciliation. Some of you may be getting married or doing what would be the, the next step for the two of you. We have the Hierophant and the Three of Cups, both which can represent marriage. Um, or taking the next step, the next level of commitment and responsibility, walking the prescribed path, which is what the Hierophant represents. It's convention, tradition, the establishment, organized religions, large corporations, institutions, you know, going along with the flow, doing, going to the next level of commitment, responsibility, um, etc. And, it, and it, it's, it's a commitment card and often can show up as a marriage card, as can the Three of Cups, celebratory kindred spirits, kinships, coming together, celebrating that energy. It could be marriage for some of you, or whatever taking the next committed, deeper step might be for the two of you, uh, for whom this would be a partnership or couple, a uh, relationship reading, um, taking a deeper sense of responsibility for your own life as well. In work and career, it can represent you know, taking on a deeper level of commitment and responsibility at work, you know, after looking at what your, the pros and cons and your, your assets and defects are, you know, there's this coming together, this reconciliation, lovely celebratory energy at the end of June. Um, it does have its challenging moments um, during the month, uh, but challenging moments mean challenging, mean, uh, mean opportunities for change um, because that's just life, you know. Uh, and remember, focus overall. This is about exciting new beginnings. This is about starting over again, because I do feel like there's a, a starting over, a renewal sense here. Um, there's an opportunity 
which if you do this, if you have the courage to take the blindfold off, Leo, there is this beautiful energy, this, the, the payoff is wisdom, insight, awareness, coming back together again, cutting off a behavior pattern and a way of thinking that's no longer working for you, and a reconciliation, lovely, coming back together again, whatever the details of that might mean for you at the end of the month, exciting new beginnings, remember that, keep focused on that, you are not trapped, you are not held hostage, take the blindfold off and look at it all, Leo, you can, you can do it, you're a lion, it's okay beautiful reading Leo absolutely beautiful reading powerful month it's a month of power potentially so Leo that pretty much wraps up your June 2018 general readings I hope you have enjoyed it that you found it uh, useful and helpful um, again if anyone is interested in a more personal tailored just for you one-on-one -on -one reading uh, please feel free to email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com i would be most happy to work with you and set up a reading with you live or recorded as quickly as we can you can find all that contact details on uh, the about button on uh, my youtube channel's homepage, or looking at the description bar of the videos i post for quick answers to quick easy questions you can also find me on the smartphone app instant go under irish gypsy that's uh, link is also with my contact details. Uh, I will see you all in a couple of weeks, Leo, for the June mid-month readings. And until then, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. Take care, and I hope to see you back here again real soon. Bye-bye.